Good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon, and welcome to a celebration of the first Holy Eucharist for our children in catechesis of the Good Shepherd. Children, along with their parents and catechists, have been preparing for this special day for many months. They have been eagerly awaiting the moment when they can join the community at the table of the Lord, and today is finally the day. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. The readings can be found on page 553. That's 553. You might notice that not all of our seats have kneelers, so we invite you to kneel or stand during the Eucharistic prayer as you feel comfortable. We are very excited and pleased to have with us this special evening. Our presider today is Father Evan, Father Vinny, and guest Father Chris will be concelebrating today. Please stand and greet those around you as we prepare to celebrate the liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with well, my friends in faith, today is special indeed as we are celebrating the first Eucharist of 16 of our children. This is an important step in continuing their initiation into the Catholic Church. And so I wish to address the parents of the first communicants, brothers and sisters. You have already had your child baptized. Do you continue to accept the responsibility of guiding your child through their journey of faith? Do you? And children, do you desire to begin receiving Holy Communion today? Do you? You have, ex you have asked to continue your initiation through your reception of Holy Communion at the celebration of this Eucharist. You will take responsibility for continuing your faith as begun in baptism. It will be your duty to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and loving your neighbor. Children, do you understand this? Do you? Oh. My dear children in faith, it's so wonderful that we get to celebrate this here with you today.
And as we prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our wrongdoings, but in a greater way, call to mind God's love and mercy. Christ has risen from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Christ has trampled over death by death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ grants life to those in the tombs. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A 
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. be glad and exalt because you rule people in equity the nations on the earth you guide oh God peoples praise you, O God. May all the people praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth hear him. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. 
it had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The, so, the wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The Word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord.
Today is always such a special day. It's such a great reminder of the hope and the joy that Christ gives us. That in sharing in this moment of First Communion with all of you children, that this is a reminder all, to all of us that we share in that same communion with you, in the same heavenly feast, the same way that God feeds us with his very love, reaches out to us and says, I am here with you. And we hear in the gospel today of that way that Christ says, my peace I give you. This peace from Christ, it's more than just a passive feeling. It's more than just a nice warmness in our heart. But it's a true gift. And it's a gift and a reminder that God is with us, that Christ is always walking with us. And that we can face the difficulties, the struggles of life and of the world. And we can share the joys of our life as well. So we can share in that joy with others. We can share the joy that we have in God with others. And I think we always need days like today. We always need these moments of joy, these moments of hope, these moments of peace to remind us that, yes, Christ's peace is with us. Christ is walking with us, giving us his love, helping us in our world. I think it's most especially important, given the realities of the world these days, of the pains that we are seeing around the world, from Ukraine to Buffalo, the reminder that peace, the peace that Christ gives is not the same that the world gives, but truly lasts. And as such, we can respond. When we see someone else who is struggling, when we see someone else who is hurting, we can reach out and we can say, I love you. I am here for you. I want to care for you. And we can do this in so many beautiful ways. And the great news is that we don't do this alone. We are a church, we are a community of believers who respond to this together. And we hear of a great example of this in the first reading, a sense of these, as the church was beginning and trying to figure out how do we love these people? How do we welcome them into our arms? What do we need to do? The church came together as a time of prayer, as a time of thought and said, this is how. Let us do this together as a community. And so in a similar way, we do that today. We do that in a special way in celebrating communion with all of you, but we do that together always, knowing that we walk with one another, that we're here for one another for support, for guidance, and that each of us can re respond in our own ways. And we also hear of this beautiful image from the book of Revelation from John of this heavenly Jerusalem this great city coming down from heaven that God himself is the light of. And this city, it's more than just an image. It is the reality that we are that city. We are the, we are the church, the city built of living stones, built upon one another to support one another, to take care of one another, to love one another. And most importantly, we are fed. We are fed by the Eucharist. We are fed by Christ and his love so that we are brought together as one always at this great feast. And I'm sure that for many of us here today, we're having perhaps moments of reminiscing to our own first communion. You know, I remember for myself, the thing I remember most clearly, oddly enough, is actually the, uh, where I was supposed to stand because our church had a cement floor and so there's markings. It's like, okay, I gotta stand here, then I go here, our uh, amen. That's what I remember most about my first communion. Little weird, but it has led me to be a part of this community. And so the first communion that all of these children receive, the communion that we all receive, leads us and guides us in our journey, helps us to grow together so that again, when we see the pains of the world, when we see woes around us and in our own lives, we are not defeated. We do not lose our peace, but rather we know that the peace of Christ is with us, for he gives it to us in this beautiful way, time and time again, and builds us up as community so that we love and support one another in our journeys, so that we can encounter that love, so that we can share that love, and together, be that shining city, to be that shining example of love in the world.
And I now invite us all as a community of faith to renew the baptism promises that we have made for ourselves and for our children. And so we renew them this day as a reminder of God's love active in our life. So I ask you, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. My friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to remain standing as we sprinkle ourselves with holy water as a reminder of our baptisms. Through Christ's death and resurrection, he brings us life eternal. With this gift of life and peace, we bring our prayers and petitions to God who loves us. Pope Francis, Bishop-elect Earl Fernandez, and all leaders of the Church, that they are always illuminated by the light of Christ's resurrection, we pray to the Lord. We pray for civil leaders around the world, that they always seek justice and respond to the needs of all. We pray to the Lord. God of new life, hear our For peace in the Ukraine and an end to violence and war in our world, that Christ's peace may be known to all, we pray to the Lord. God of new life, we 
pray for the communities of Buffalo and Laguna Woods who have suffered violent attacks, that they know the healing and peace, and all that all lives of people of color are respected for their God-given dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord of the sick, suffering, and oppressed, that their needs may be cared for and that they are comforted. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of all those who have died, that they share in Christ's resurrection, we pray to the Lord. For all the prayers in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, you are the source of all love. May we cherish the example you give us and find strength to practice the faith in you that we profess. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And please be seated.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. For the praise and glory of his name. For the benefit of all this holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our elected bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with, the, with your blessed apostles and glorious, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our consolation, we pray, O Lord, Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by, our help, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I now invite the children to please come forward as they have prepared a special song to sing for all of us. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the announcements. First, we'd like to invite uh, Shana, our Director of Children's Education and Faith Formation, to come forward. So. Giving. We are thankful for Jesus, for the gift of himself in the Holy Eucharist. We also would like to thank all of you for being part of this wonderful and prayerful experience. We would especially like to thank Miss Jen, Miss Melissa, Mr. Joe, Miss Diane, Miss Kara, Mr. Oppo, and all of our other catechists and aides for sharing Jesus' love with us. Thank you to the music ministry for the wonderful job you have done. And a special thank you to the parents, all the catechists, and atrium friends for helping the children to know all and more about the Good Shepherd and his great gift to us. Parents and family, I want to remind you you're invited to join the last 15 minutes of atrium tomorrow to share in the celebration of Mr. Goji with us. Thank you. And again, a special thank you to you, Shana, for all of your hard work working with all of our catechists. And uh, thank you to all, all the parents journeying with your children. And a special welcome to everyone tonight, for those joining virtually, to sp uh, guests who are here with us for just this night. We're happy to have you all here with us. Uh, we have just one brief announcement this week, and that's a bit of an update on our Newman Challenge. I'm not going to give uh, too much info, because you can find all the boring number stuff online on the website. But we're three quarters of the way through the year, and we're at three quarters of our goal for the year, so we're doing good. <laughs> so. Let us stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads down and pray for God's blessing. May our loving God 
who filled the world with joy by the gift of Jesus, bless and strengthen these children so that they may grow to be more like Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God bless the families of these children so that his love is shared through their daily living. Amen. Amen. And for all of us here, may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.